Good evening, Dark Souls, and you innocents too. We have crafted this creepy art show just for you. Whatever your age and whatever your care, exhale till you're pale. Now, hold on to thin hair. With glints of surreal that may move you to shiver, we celebrate spooky. We hope to deliver. Emerge from your hearse and make way for the pall. Come one, come all to the skeleton crowd. You scared me. You're quite a bit early. I was expecting you at 10 p.m. Oh, right. You Earthlings like to play with time. Like it's some flexible, malleable object you can just push to and fro. 
It will come back to haunt you come morning. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Skeleton Crawl. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, wherever you are in the world. Thank you to the undead artists who submitted work to the show. We have over 40 artists participating this year. I wish we could be together in person, but then again, I'm a ghost anyway. But I know you're here with me in spirit. Just a few things before we begin. If you like what you see tonight and you enjoy the show, please consider donating to theskeletoncrawl.com slash donate. This entire show has been built completely free of charge, but we would love to pay the artists involved. We have three giveaways tonight. To participate in the first two, you will need to use the comment box that's on the live stream within Facebook. If you're watching from our website, unfortunately you will not be able to participate in the first two giveaways, but you will be able to participate in the final grand prize giveaway if you follow the directions to enter. More on that in a minute. This year, our giveaways are only available to US residents. So if you are watching tonight from overseas, thank you, firstly, for watching. That's amazing. <laughs> You're incredible. But uh, please do not participate in the giveaway portion of the show, as we, at this time, cannot afford to do international shipping. Now, let me tell you about our grand prize giveaway, the hidden treasure. We are giving away a brand new Polaroid Instant Camera to one lucky winner. It is a one-step, i-type camera with a white camera body that can Bluetooth to your phone for a trigger release and manual settings so you can nerd out of your mind. You will also receive two packs of black and white film so you can get straight to shooting. A $190 value for free. But who will be our winner? To enter. Find us on Instagram at Skeleton Crawl. Like a post. Any post that mentions these giveaway directions. Click the follow button. Tag a friend in the comments of that giveaway post you liked. And post a picture of yourself in your costume and tag us at Skeleton Crawl with the hashtag, hashtag Skeleton Crawl in the picture. If you aren't in your costume, that's a crying shame. But you can still participate by posting a picture of you with your carved jack-o'-lantern or a creepy drawing that you've made and tagging us in the picture. We will be drawing at the end of the show so you have plenty of time if you haven't entered yet. So get to posting. Don't you think? Much better. Now, most of the artwork on the show tonight is for sale, and it will be listed along with each piece accordingly. If you are interested in purchasing a piece, please just direct message us on Instagram, here on Facebook, or send us an email at theskeletoncrawl at gmail.com. We will get back to you after the show about the details. We will also be listing artists' Instagram handles. So if you see a work that you like, please go check that artist out and give them a follow. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Stare hard enough at the fabric of night, and if you're predisposed to dark, Let's say the window you've picked is a black postage stamp you spend hours at, sleepless, drinking gin after the I Love Lucy reruns have gone off. Stare like your eyes have force, and behind any night's taut scrim will come the forms you expect, pressing from the other side. For you, a field of skulls, angled jaws and eye sockets, a zillion scooped-out crania. They're plain once you think to look. You know such fields exist, for criminals roam your very block, and even history lists monsters like Adolf and Uncle Joe, who stalk the Earth's orb, plus minor baby-eaters unidentified, probably in your very midst. 
perhaps that disgruntled mail clerk from your job has already scratched your name on a bullet. That's him wrestling in the azaleas. You caress the thought, for it proves there's no better spot for you than here, your square yard of chintz sofa, hearing the bad news piped steady from your head. The night is black. You stare and furious stare, confident there are no gods out there. In this way, you're blind to your own eye's intricate machine and to the light it sees by, to the luck of birth and all your remembered loves. If the skulls are there, let's say they do press toward you against night's grim. Could they not stare with slack-jawed envy at the fine flesh that covers your scalp, the numbered hairs, at the force your hands hold?
That last piece is the neon handiwork of Casey Lees. Casey is from St. Louis, Missouri, and is based out of New York City. She earned her MFA from the School of Visual Arts in New York, and she is currently on faculty at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. She is developing a handbook for the neon artist, and she teaches neon workshops across the country. She also is the founder and director of Rare Air Exhibition Space, located on Governor's Island in New York Harbor. Rare Air exhibits primarily experimental works in the fields of neon and green screen. It also offers a fee-free studio program for New York-based artists during the summer. You can find Casey online at the link there, and also follow her Instagram for the space. Now, for our first giveaway. The Cabinet of Curiosities Prize of Ancient Symbols. The winner in this giveaway will receive this original woodcut relief print titled Analysis of the Origin of Symbolism. It is part of an edition by Skeleton Crawl director Anna Russell depicting common and cryptic symbols from art and history. Printed on an elegant bright white rice paper with black ink this print measures 10 and a half by 21 and a half inches. Valued at $100 for free tonight to one lucky winner. Let's play. Hey guys, let's do a giveaway. Giving away this print. And you don't have to pay to play. So um, happy blue moon, by the way, Halloween, since uh, 1974 is what my husband said, um, super special. So I hope y'all are all having a really good night. Um, so in honor of the blue moon Halloween, we're gonna do a little um, drawing that involves moon marbles. So, this is how it's going to work. Basically, you're going to need to use the comment box in the Facebook live stream if you want to participate. Um, this drawing allows for 13 players. So, um, basically, when I say go, then type blue moon into the comment box and the first 13 that pop up will be the ones that'll play. All right, ready, set, go. Blue moon, blue moon guys. Let me see that blue moon. There's a blue moon. Con Brio, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Smith. Patricia Ann. Dorothy Osborne. We have Jasmine Dickinson. Dixon, sorry. Rita Halpert, hi. Loved your witchy face today. Sasha. Miss you. 
Hi, Rose. Candace. Just got a couple more here, guys. Emma. Hope you're good. Andrew. Thanks for tuning in. And Nisa. All right. Nisa Lovendahl. All right, so we have 13 players. So each person gets to, gets assigned a moon color. So, and then we'll put them into bloody worms. All right. So Conbrio, you are green. Dan Sullivan, you are green blue squirrel. Green blue swirl. Tongue twister. Julie Smith, McCroskey, you are silver. Silver moon. Patricia Ann McCaffrey, you are purple white moon. Dorothy Osborne, you are red moon. Jasmine Dixon, you are a white moon. Rita Halpert, speckled moon. Sasha Winters, you are a black moon. It's like a new moon. Rose Silverman Gorn, you are a yellow moon. Candace Costin, you are a red black moon. Emma Gonzalez, you are a blue moon. Andrew Kevelson, you are a turquoise clear blue moon. And Nisa Lovendahl, you are a clear moon. All right. I'm gonna stir it all around with this massive fork. And that's probably loud for you. I apologize, didn't think about the metal and glass. All right. And I'm gonna dig, dig through some worms. Got one. Oh. Let's see. Who do we have? We have a clear blue moon. I think that's Andrew. Yes, Andrew Kevelson, you get the print. Congratulations. All right, back to the show, guys. Thanks for playing. The Mad Hatter Prize. The winner in this giveaway will receive our haunted postcard box set. A black and white paper box with our hand stamped logo filled with 10 beautifully creepy postcard reprints of artworks from Skeleton Crawl Exhibitions. Each card is made of thick, semi matte cardstock with each artist's details displayed with their piece. Ready to be framed as a keepsake? or written on and mailed to all your witchy friends. Our logo is designed by Lyndon Perkins, and our packaging is plastic-free, so you can be creepy and kind simultaneously. Valued at $67 for free tonight to one lucky winner.
Oh, oh, okay. What about Welcome to the Jungle? What is the number? Seventy-three ninety-nine. Seventy-three ninety-nine. What is this? Right. Yeah, turn it in. This sucks. Oh, no, this is I got it. I think I got this. Prove it. I watch you burn some to see. I watch you glide across the screen. I watch slide down room like ghosts that we can all see. And when you left, we could all feel you messing. Are you okay? Yes. Oh, that's okay.
Yeah, I can see you fine. Can you see me? Yeah. Hi, how are you, honey? I'm fine. How are you guys? Well, sweetheart, we wanted to call and talk with you about um, something just doesn't seem to be going right. Are you still dating that guy we met? Yeah. You seem so nice. I gotta go, guys. My food is here. I'm so hungry, but I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Want to watch more films like this over the weekend? Go find Ryan Dickey on Vimeo.com. His most recent short film, Montana, Georgia, made its world premiere at South by Southwest last year. And it was an official selection at Overlook, Twin Cities, and Montana Film Festivals. It's available to watch on Vimeo right now. Ryan just finished shooting a feature-length version of this film. So go get hooked on it. Follow him on Instagram so that you can know when and where to find this film when it comes out. 
Next up is Rose Silverman Gorn, who makes surreal, bizarre paintings and sculptures depicting cartoonish, imaginary creatures, distorted faces, and childish motifs like dolls and clowns, often appearing cute, but unsettling. Her work flaunts cuteness in the face of bleakness, showcasing the resilience and strength of the human spirit in the face of trauma. Bye. <laughs> 
The stink waves of this distant case they show a tepid haze, a collapse of days alone. In his Talent tastes like chocolate cake alone. Triple baked by the fire lake, it's so.
I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading till it seemed that sense was breaking through, and when they were all seated, a service, like a drum, kept beating, beating till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul, with those same boots of lead again, then space began to toll, as all the heavens were a bell, and being but an ear, and I, and silence, some strange race, wrecked, solitary, here. And then a plank in reason broke, and I dropped down, and down, and hit a world at every plunge, and finished knowing, then... Hear the sledges with the bells, silver bells. What a world of merriment their melody foretells. How they tinkle, tinkle, tinkle in the icy air of night. While the stars that oversprinkle all the heavens seem to twinkle with the crystal light delight, keeping time, 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 in a sort of runic rhyme. To the tint and ebullition that so musically rolls from the bells, 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 from the jingling and the tinkling of the bells. Hear the mellow wedding bells, golden bells. What a world of happiness the harmony foretells through the balmy air of night, how they ring out their delight from the molten golden notes and all in tune. What a liquid ditty floats to the turtle dove that listens while she gloats on the moon over mouth the sounding sounds. What a gush of euphony, how it swells, how it dwells on the future, how it tells of the rapture that impels to the swinging and the ringing of the bells, 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 of the bells, 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 to the rhyming and the chiming of the bells. The loud alarm bells, brazen bells, what tale of terror, now their turbulency tells in the startled ear of night, how they scream out their affright, too much horrified to speak, they can only shriek, shriek, out of tune, in a clamorous appealing to the mercy of the fire, in a mad expostulation with the deaf and frantic fire, leaping higher, 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 with a desperate desire and a resolute endeavor, now, now to sit never by the side of the pale-faced moon, oh the bells, 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 what a tale their terror tells of despair. How they cling and clash and roar, what a horror they outpour on the bosom of the palpitating air. Yet the ear it fully knows, by the twanging and the clanging, how the danger ebbs and flows. Yet the ear distinctly tells, in the jangling and the wrangling, how the danger sinks and swells, by the sinking or the swelling, in the anchor of the bells, of the bells, of the bells, 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 in the clamor and the clangor of the bells. The tolling of the bells, iron bells, what a world of solemn thought their monody compels in the silence of the night, how we shiver with the fright and the melancholy meaning of their tone. For every sound that floats from the rust within their throats is a groan. And the people, all the people, they that dwell up in the steeple all alone. And who tolling, tolling, tolling in that muffled monotone, feel the glory and so rolling on the human heart of stone. They are neither men nor women, they are neither brute nor human, they are ghouls. And their king it is who tolls, and he rolls, 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 rolls the peon from the bells, and his merry bosom swells with the peon of the bells, and he dances and he yells, keeping time, time, time in a sort of runic rhyme to the peon of the bells, of the bells, keeping time, time, time in a sort of runic rhyme to the throbbing of the bells. Of the bells, 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 to the sobbing of the bells, keeping time, 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 as he nails, 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 in a happy runic rhyme, to the rolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the tolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the moaning and the groaning of the bells. That last tune was written by Brandon Breidenauer and sung by Ben Russell. Founders is a New York-based ensemble who reimagines the concert experience by combining folk music, classical, original compositions, and pop arrangements into their performances. They won first place at the Savvy Chamber competition this past February, and are currently working on their next album, Songs for the End of Time which is based off the Messian masterpiece. Follow them on Instagram to find out when this album is available for download or vinyl. 
Founders will be sharing one more tune from the post series tonight, and these two songs have just become available on Bandcamp for you. So go download them at foundersmusic.bandcamp.com. Welcome back, guys. Ready for our next giveaway? I'm doing a postcard set. This is a skeleton crawl signature postcard set from last year's exhibition. Um, there are 10 postcards in here, 10 artists. Um, let's go through a few of them. You've seen a few pieces already. This is Jeremy from last year. We have Carlos. Katrina, you saw this piece earlier. Rose. We have Laura here. And we have her skeleton hand as well. Rita. Jesse. Eden, you saw this piece as well. And Allison, she had a different piece this year, but this was her piece last year. So you get all those postcards in this lovely little box set. And we're also doing fancy Halloween themed stamps to go along. So you don't even have to pay for postage. Usually this postcard set uh, goes for $67 on our shop page. Um, and so if you are disappointed, if you don't win, you're welcome to buy one, <laughs> but we're going to do a drawing now. Um, actually not drawing. We're going to do a spider toss. So we've got a few spiders in here. And we have, uh, 49 spiders. So what we're going to do, if you notice the branch disappeared, we have a web on the wall with a bullseye in the middle. And um, I'm going to throw all of the 49 spiders onto the web at one time. And the spider that is the closest, each spider has a number on his leg. And the spider that is the closest to the bullseye will be the winning number. And then what I'm gonna have you guys do is pick a number between one and 49 and type it in the box. And the first person to pick the number that hit the bullseye wins the postcard set. Sound good? Okay. You can go ahead and start picking your numbers, guys. Forty-nine between one and forty-nine. <laughs> All right. All right, we have a winning number. Let me see your numbers, guys. Here we go, we're getting some numbers. Good, keep them coming, guys. All right, let's see. I got a, I got a number from Jesse, I got a number from Sasha, not the right number. Keep guessing, guys. You can guess more than once. Any number between one and 49. Getting some numbers. Not the right number. Keep guessing, guys. All right, how about I tell you what it's not so everyone's on the same page. Okay, so not 13, not 
three, not 36, not 12 or nine or 22, not 24, not 27, not 18. Sorry, I thought y'all would guess it right away. <laughs> This is a little bit of a slower, slow food game. Not 16. Keep them coming, guys. Not 29, not 33, not 16 or 5. Not 37. Come on, Sasha, you're not taking notes. I thought you'd be the one taking notes. And there it goes, Sasha. I said your name when you guessed it. 32, Sasha Winters. Good job, guys. Sasha, you get this lovely postcard box set and little creepy stamps. I'll mail them your way soon. Thank you for being patient and flexible, guys. Um, I had fun. <laughs> I hope you had fun. Um, we have quite a bit more of the show to go, but I do want to say um, that if you haven't entered into the final giveaway, we have one more tonight for a Polaroid camera. I'll show you. The real deal. This thing is awesome. It Bluetooths to your phone so you can, it shoots by itself as well, like real film, but you can Bluetooth it to your phone to use it as a manual shutter release. So you can set it up and walk and actually be in the Polaroid picture, which if you shoot Polaroid, you know is pretty much impossible. Um, so super cool, you can do that with this camera and it also has manual settings within the app on the phone. It's a really cool camera and it comes with two packs of black and white film um, completely free to the winner. Um, I love Polaroid. There's several um, artists in this show that also love Polaroid, whether they used it for this show or not. Um, so use Polaroid if you don't already and enter. Um, the details are going to pop up again, I believe. And um, you just need to head over to Instagram and tag us to help us get some more traction. And then I will put your Instagram handle into this box with your name. And we'll do a drawing later on tonight. Okay? Hope you keep enjoying the show. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Halloween! Tarot cards are everywhere today, and for many, these cards hold the secrets or truths of the present and future within them. The illustrations on the cards are simple and beautiful, but they all lack something major that is unfortunately lacking in much of our accepted culture, diversity. The traditional tarot set depicts only fair-skinned subjects, and most of these subjects are men. Brooklyn-based artist Liana Ostretcher is addressing this problem head-on, with her new series, Tarot for Self-Healing. Liana is reinterpreting the outdated cards and replacing each subject symbolized on a card with a black woman. These new renditions show powerful and confident women of color front and center, an important and much needed statement today. I'm here now with Liana to talk about this series and her practice. Hi, Liana. Hi. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Of course. So let's talk about the series. Tell us a little bit about it and what inspired it. Well, with the beginning of the quarantine, everybody was in their homes and we all started to feel that combination of looking around your home and wanting something more. And I'm just trying to work on my mental health. Mm -hmm. So with this series, I combined myself getting back into tarot Mm -hmm. and just wanting to make something that can help others the way that tarot has helped me. So I created this series, which is Tarot for Self-Healing. And I recreate the tarot cards and I use black women to represent 
all of the different figures. Are these pieces more research or intuition based, would you say? They are wildly enough heavily research based. Yeah. I know that the whole point of tarot is intuition and trusting in the cards, but I really wanted to take the element that I really like about tarot, which is everything has symbolism and everything has a meaning behind it. Um, so I did do my own research when I was adding something into it. I always wanted to make sure that it wasn't there for no reason, that there was a point in it. Yeah. So in your painting of death, I noticed that you changed it a little bit from the beginning to the end since you, um, you post on Instagram, your progress pieces, um, you moved death from being indoors to being outdoors. Was this because of research that you did or how did you make this decision? When you usually look at the original death card, it is actually a skeleton on a horseback um, and there are people who are dying surrounding them. So at first I did want to create something, I'm not sure why, but that was more palatable, that wasn't, didn't have so much carnage in it, but that wouldn't really signify death, would it? So I, um, I wanted to create something that took a combination of that very in your face message that the card has and put it more into what's happening now. So I filled the water that was behind the figure with the hands of drowning black people. And I made death into a black woman because I can relate to the way death has become such a huge part of every single African American's lives during the Black Lives Matter movement and just generally the way that people are treated you will grow up having um, kind of a violence inside of you from everything that's happening um, and just learning to channel that into something and I really wanted to make something that even if you didn't understand the symbolism, you would still understand what's happening. Um, but for the symbolism of it as well, I put a flower called candy tufts into it and they signify indifference, which is something that happens a lot when you watch the news every day and you see violence happening all the time, you just become indifferent to it because it's the only way you can protect your mental health and just your emotional well-being. And I also put a duckling because they uh, signify new hope and change, which is very important right now. Yeah, you can really see her um, confidence. It's a really moving piece. Um, out of all the pieces, uh, which would you say has been the hardest for you to develop? Definitely the death one, just emotionally. It has the most meaning behind it than anything else for me personally. Um, I unfortunately have attended many funerals and um, now it's just, it, it feels like even though death is not at our doorstep, it's just so much more present. And I was just channeling the fear into something. Speaking of the world, um, I find it interesting that she is weeping. Mm -hmm. Can you speak on that? Yes. Well, the world card represents bringing everything in balance and harmony. And she's crying because it's something that we do every day and we have to work through everything that we do in order to make sure that our lives are in balance. And I think that everybody, no matter where you're from right now, it's very difficult to try and keep your head above water, but we're all striving to. 
So she really shows the almost the humanity of uh, trying to have a, a life in balance and harmony. Yeah. So switching gears a little bit, uh, let's talk about your practice. Is your studio currently uh, at home or is it exterior? Uh, yes, it is at home right now. I really love doing it at home because I am a night owl. So once like nine or 10 o'clock hits, my brain is ready to go and my day has started. <laughs> and um, I just like that I can wake up at two in the morning if I have an idea and I can grab a canvas and start painting or I can grab my journal and start drawing. I like the convenience of it and I never have to, you know, hold it when you're creating something and you have an idea pop in your head. It's still fresh if you are going to your um, studio, but it's not the same as if you can just walk right over to your canvas and just start painting right away. So uh, is that your routine then, a late night routine? That's when you're usually inspired and when you create, is that a regular for you? It's definitely a regular for me. I've become uh, very accustomed to hearing the birds in the morning <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Liana's Instagram is drawn by Ray and you can follow her there. You keep uh, progress posts on this series on the Instagram. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And when can we plan on seeing the finished series? Do you have a goal post or is it just kind of as things go? I would say the dream is to finish it probably by April. But realistically, I hope that is completed by December of 2021. Thanks, Liana, for being a part of the show. Thanks for and having Good luck with uh, the continued progress. It's been really great to watch you create the series thus far, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Thank you so much. So follow Liana at Drawn by Ray on Instagram. And now, Tarot for Self Healing.
Laura Murray is an artist exploring how science, urbanism, and art are all interconnected. She uses acrylic, polymer clay, dirt, rocks, hay, broken glass, bottle caps, and cicada exoskeletons to bring her works to life. It's a blend of sculpture meets painting. Her work has been exhibited internationally, including at the Postmasters Gallery in New York, Arc Gallery in San Francisco, and the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. She has also been featured in the New York Magazine, The Nation, and Vice's The Creators Project. Laura's joining us now to give us a peek into her studio where it all happens. Hi, Laura. Hey, Anna. You ready for the tour? Definitely. Show us around. I've got um, kind of three bodies of work out for you right now. One is this x-ray series. X-rays are just a subject that I've been fascinated with ever since I was like little and you know had my teeth x-rayed at the dentist and I remember the dentist like showing me the x-rays and I just I loved the um just the glow and the depth and the translucency of these x-rays this is an x-ray of my dad's leg and he sent me this picture of like the screws and staples that his surgeons put in his leg and I just remember thinking how similar in shape it was to that of a praying mantis. This painting right here actually is um, an x-ray of someone's lungs after having contracted COVID. So this was like one of the first paintings I did um, in my quarantine. And then these up here in the middle is um, a series of work focused on something called the era of the Anthropocene, which essentially is the scientific era that we're in right now. Essentially, like nature is no longer evolving in a way that is natural. It evolves based on human interaction. So that this series here kind of focuses on minute instances that represent that idea. And then the last grouping of works that I have out are um, what I call my Oklahoma studies. So I do these five by seven paintings that are essentially just paintings of like various snapshots of places I visited in Oklahoma. I uh, collect these cicada exoskeletons on hikes and stuff like that. I think there's about 800 of them in this box here, but I have several boxes of them. And what I do is I very simply just um, paint them gold and then I install them in these like giant swarms and galleries. And they just, you know, kind of go right on the wall. So yeah, cicadas are a really interesting insect, um, specifically because they live so long and they, their, their life story is almost like the inversion of what human life is. So we spend the majority of our lives above ground. Um, and when we die, we go back into the ground and cicadas spend the majority of their lives underground and towards the very end of their life cycle is when they emerge from the ground to essentially live out their glory days which are just like a blip in the timeline that is their life. When you go about collecting these materials are you collecting them kind of as an arsenal to work from? Um, do these materials inspire certain works or do you have this concept and then you go out and seek out the materials that you're going to use? Usually it starts with like an image in my head. Um, like for example, in that piece called Gertie, it features a green parrot that's kind of splayed out on the ground and there's a uh, headstone behind the parrot that just has the word Gertie on it. That's a headstone I actually passed several times uh, in a place called Greenwood Cemetery. 
which is in Brooklyn, right next to where I live. And Greenwood is also known for having these green parrots that exist in the cemetery that have essentially like thrived for generations. And the rumor, I guess, is that the parrots essentially started from pet parrots that got loose and just like proliferated in Greenwood Cemetery. And in thinking about how that piece was going to look, I then would think about different materials to use, like if there was some sort of like loose gravel that I could use in the acrylic modeling paste that I use for the headstone, if there was some sort of shiny thing that I could mix in with the paint to give it this illusion of chiseled granite. So like, for example, I'm actually gonna step away real quick and grab something for you. This is the material that I love so much and it's just coarse mica, which is just like a shaved stone that I was able to mix in with the paint and also just kind of like gently sprinkle on top of the paint as it was drying. And it mixed with that paint so well and really gave this illusion of stone with these like little flecks of mica in it, the way that granite has these little flecks of mica in it. So it's it's just a process that evolves as I make the piece, you know? Like I didn't originally think, oh, I'm gonna use this material. It was just something that I thought of as I was creating this gravestone. So how important is it for the materials to be symbolically, like conceptually tied to a place if you're uh, concept has to do with a specific place like the cemetery where there are elements of of rock and uh, and dirt and things that you are gathering from this location in order for this piece to have the grounding that you wanted it to have or does the location not matter so much for the materials? I suppose it is important to me that my viewers understand what the materials are and where they came from to me it's almost like a like an easter egg or a silent nod to I don't, I don't know just some sort of like fun secret between the object and the creator the piece itself obviously is presenting a narrative of some kind a narrative that is incomplete and open-ended for the viewer but if the viewer wants to really start speculating about this artwork and what kind of intention is behind it, they can take a look at the medium and start putting the puzzle piece together. So do you have any um, secrets or tips that you don't mind sharing with artists that are just starting to work in, with mixed medium um, on how to kind of incorporate that into their work or even ways to adhere it to the work? successfully. There is a material that I love and this material is called ultralight and um, it's really cool. I don't know if the camera is going to pick up on this but it essentially looks like marshmallow paste and you can use it like marshmallow paste or you can thin it down with water and you can mix all sorts of materials in there. I've mixed broken glass, pebbles, sand, salt, that like mica powder that I was showing you, and you can also just mix paint in it. There's almost no pigment in the ultralight, so it absorbs paint really well. Or just like any kind of golden modeling compound, I find is a really good adhesive. Um, so yeah, that would be my advice. That's great. Well, thank you so much for letting us take a peek in your studio. Thanks for being here virtually. For anyone that wants to keep up with you and what you're doing, how can they do that? They can take a look at my website, www.lauramurray.net, um, or they can follow me on Instagram at Laura Murray Art. It's all one word. I'm also going to have um, a, a, a new cicada swarm iteration at um, a place called Here Art Center in uh, like the Soho area of Manhattan um, for a solo show in the spring. 
All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. bye. Next up is a tune by Caleb Burhans. Caleb lives in New York City and is both a performer with strings and voice and a composer. Hailed by the New York Times as animated and versatile and by Time Out New York as New York's Mohawk Mozart. Caleb has been commissioned by Lincoln Center, Carnegie Hall, Library of Congress, and the Kronos Quartet. His debut album, Even Song, was named one of NPR's top 50 albums in the year it was released. You are about to hear one of the songs from this album, titled Super Flumina Babylonis. Thank you. 
My mother is a ghost, but I have never seen her. She can move anything. That's her blowing out the light bulbs. Or is she in the floorboards, whining underneath my feet? My mother is a witch. She told me so in the old Mazda. I am strapped in back, wrapped. I'm thinking brooms and hats, moles and chins. My mother is beautiful. It is nonsense. She explains, that makes me a witch too. My mother is a scream. She's got us by the howling slack jaw, gut clutching well before the punchline. On my own, I am a shadow, and the gag is too. I cannot do it justice. My mother is a was, bald head, blue gown, a princess of bones and wigs, straight with a fringe and curly. I picked that one. She is beautiful. There is no explanation. My mother is a beast, wild and untethered. If you call her, she will not come. She knows nothing of her origin or yours. My mother is me, or I am what is left. A flightless specter, a paw, wit without finesse. Sometimes I cannot see my skin from my bones.
wonder what happened to me! Motherfucker! Is everything okay? We haven't heard from you in a while and there was a bunch of mail outside. Hey, hey, help me! Please, help me! <laughs> Actually, the whole town was concerned. We care about you more than you know. He's holding me captive down here! I'll see you at work soon. You're bleeding. Do you need help bandaging that up?
Please, 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 get me, please. Get me to me. for the final giveaway. If you're still here, thank you for holding on to the end. Um, some people had some issues on their end getting the stream, um, but we will be uploading this video hopefully tomorrow on YouTube instead of Facebook for anyone that wants to see parts that they haven't seen and still feel the creepy vibes for the rest of the weekend. Um, but thank you for sticking around and it's time for the final giveaway. Um, here's a few costumes that are lovely. We have Sasha Winters as a festive leaf and Emma Gonzalez, beautiful. We have, um, Mel and Hamilton. And the Joker. All right. So everyone that participated, you are in here. And the Polaroid camera goes to, this makes me so nervous for some reason. Dorothy Osborne. Can't see it. Dorothy Osborne, congratulations. She was an artist in the show as well. Um, thank you so much guys for participating in the draw and also for watching the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy it, it would be great if you would consider either buying something from our shop that supports the artists, buying some of the art you saw tonight, um, or 
donating at theskeletoncrawl.com slash donate. Um, that wraps up our show, but I hope you have a lovely Halloween and a great rest of your weekend. Bye. Well, that's the show. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope you have a wonderful night. Ah! Uh-huh.